As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Just check this out, more massive antlers than you could ever imagine. Hey everybody, welcome to the show in the beautiful state of Ohio, where today we're visiting s and Whitetail Galore. This place is also known as the Bone Factory. You're gonna find out why. You know, every person out there, if you're a sports fan, you have your favorite sports team. And uh, there are some teams that are dynasties through the years or through the decades, it seems like. And in the deer farming industry, Billy Sage is that dynasty. They have stacked the genetics so deep for so long that literally every one of the deer that you see in their yearling pen, for example, every one of them may be the next superstar in the deer industry. Some things just happen by accident, and the bone factory was nothing more than that. I knew I'd stumbled into something. Max Bove is regarded by many as the king of sires. And then come Shadow. Mitzi and I, we truly believe this is the house that Shadow built. Folks, I'm a deer farmer, have been for quite some time, and I'm in awe at what I see here. How are you doing this morning? This is the Bone Factory. I asked Billy how he came up with the name, the Bone Factory. Some things just happened by accident, and the Bone Factory was nothing more than that. Out mowing the pen one day, uh, and had my phone in my pocket, it goes off. It's James Butler from High Roller. He said, what are you doing? I said, man, just sitting here. All these bucks start coming around the uh, mower, and it's a group of yearlings we had, we called them the Boys in Black, and Black Shadow, TNT, uh, just some awesome frame, Black Mama, beautiful yearlings. And uh, I said, no, actually, James, I'm looking at the Bone Factory. And he said, what? I said, yeah, I said, I'm looking at the Bone Factory. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, I got all these big bucks just coming around a lot more. I said, it's the Bone Factory. And he's like, Wait a minute, what would you take for that right now? Would you take 25,000 cash for that logo right now? And when he said that, I knew I had stumbled into something. And I said, no way, this is the bone factory. <laughs> In the deer farming industry, there's a deer that is probably one of the best known deer of all time. He was a grand sire, and I'm talking about one of the best sires ever born. His name was Max Bowe. And Billy was a part of Max Bow. Billy had ownership in that deer. So in the 20 plus years of deer farming, um, Max Bow is regarded by many as the king of sires. He was one of the first big, beautiful, beautiful deers. And uh, one of the deer that came out of Max Bow was a deer by the name of Shadow. Mitzi and I, we truly believe this is the house that Shadow built. I mean, everything you see here on this farm is not possible without Shadow. Shadow was a game changer in this industry, and Shadow was owned by Billy and Mitzi Sage, lived right here out of Logan, Ohio. Shadow has passed on, but his descendants are alive and well, and they're giant. And now there's a proven living legend. His name is Sudden Express, and he's right here at SNS Whitetail Galore. Or we feel like he's a living legend. Just, just, we're just so, so blessed to have a deer of his caliber and the production he has. Uh, we're breeding some of the best sires in Texas. When the show returns, yeah. oh, no. they've all got the potential to be 
a giant. They're all bred to be a giant. That's I mean, right. just take a look at them. Just had an uh, instance happen today. Um, had a doe breach ponds. We hold that shut. Uh, it's a tense moment. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Record Rack Deer Feed, the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, the North American Deer Registry, Beam Fence Company, WinAtexasDeerFarm.com, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, Headgear LLC, Superior Milk Replacer, Newport Laboratories, Advanced Deer Genetics, Whitetail Supplies, and by Keith Warren's Texas Hidden Springs Ranch. Probably 75% of the females on this farm have Shadow's mother or Shadow in the pedigree. But if you haven't heard of Southern Express, he, he's here, he's on this farm, and, uh, and we've been here every year that Deer and Wildlife Stories has been in existence. We have been here. Billy has been a wonderful supporter of not just our television show, but the deer industry. And we can go back and we can show you video of Sudden Express when he was a yearling and, and, uh, and when he was a, a, a young deer. And yeah. how old is he now? He's five. So Sudden Express has been getting it done and, and, uh, and he is one of the most popular deer in the industry right now. He is absolutely giant. But you know, the, the cool thing that I think about Sudden Express is, now you said he's five. That's right. Okay. And now all of a sudden, He's proven himself now. He's already got grandsons that are just crazy. I mean, just take a look at them, folks. Now, they, you've got blood from a lot of other animals out here, too. But the Sudden Express is really what's getting it on. And it's obvious if you came in here and you picked out the number one, two, and three biggest bucks in this pen right That's here, right. they all go back to Sudden Express. Yeah. I know that every year that we come out here, we come early. You're like one of the very first farms that we do. I think you are the first farm we've done for the last three or four years, and it is the last week of July. So the deer that we're showing you, they've got another, what, three to four weeks of growing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and there's no guarantees they'll be the biggest two-year-olds. But and, and we do have a lot of yearlings out here out of other sires. Mm -hmm. Masterpiece, It's So Easy, you know, Energizer. Uh, Some free. of your anchor stuff. Some that's your, right, that's right. right. And those are really nice yearlings too. But the key is, you, is if you look at these, you know, in this pen right here, maybe 40 yearlings or whatever, the average is really, really good. You don't know who's going to be the next superstar because 90% of them are big yearlings. Most guys don't really want to sell a yearling. I mean, unless they get a lot of money for That's it right. because literally they've all got the potential to be a giant. They're all bred to be a giant. That's I mean, right. just take a look at them. So any of these, you got a one in 40 chance in somebody in here is going to be the best out of the 40 next year. That's Which right. ones are going to be? That's right. All I know is that Sudden Express is getting the job done and and now we've got grandsons on the ground to prove it yeah not many five-year-old bucks have grandsons i mean that's just you get not big ones i'll put it that way well what we're gonna do we're gonna go and take a look at the two-year-olds now and if you're wondering what he's using to bring the deer up peanuts peanuts that work really really good Holy smokes, what a difference a year makes. So these are the two-year-olds, and just look at how much bigger they are. I mean, there's some in here that are just absolutely, I mean, there, there, there's some that just step, I mean, they're all good, but there's some of them that are just unreal. So tell me, the biggest one in here, who is he out of? You know, saying the biggest one, let's just say the four biggest. It, it's hard. We, we, they're, they're, here's what's cool this year. We got four bucks that are so totally different, but all are huge yep. in their own way. So we got one buck, he's, I don't know, he's hes really wide, but it's the tallest rack I've ever seen on a whitetail. And he's got three or four weeks of growing and we've already named him Jurassic. I Holy mean, he's just, smokes. He's just nuts. I mean, you look at the height on that rack, it's crazy. <laughs> he's a freeze frame uh, on Black Shadow, which is Shadow Hardcore Sister on 2028, Robert Williams 2028, on Sudden Impact. These does kind of build our program. And then we gambled and went and paid a lot, a lot of money for these Sudden Impact sisters. Because we just felt like that was the best of the fleece line. Yeah, you, you, you deer hunters out there that are sitting here looking at these deer, thinking, no, there's gotta be drugs involved. There's gotta be something going on because these deer are too big, especially at two years old. There is something going on here. It's genetics, isn't it? That's right. 
about a quarter of a century on this farm. And the it's thing is, it's no secret. He's no, telling no. you, if you're a deer breeder, right. he's telling you how he's doing it. Right. It's the, just he has 25 years of doing it. That's right. The difference is, is you've got genetics, genetics. And, you, and you're taking care of them with great animal husbandry and look at them. That's right. The results show. And Sudden Express just keeps getting it done, doesn't he? It just keeps, just keeps getting it done. When the show returns, Occasionally things uh, on the farm don't go as expected. She's in trouble, the baby's in trouble. Uh, it's a tense moment. Give me some more towels. Closed captioning is brought to you by Seven Seas Whitetails. Now it's time for the Beam Fence Minute. I'm Mark Beam from Beam Fence Company. This is a T-post pounder that we've invented and we've got a patent on it for pounding six foot T-posts or eight foot T-posts in the ground. The nice thing about this T-post pounder, it's a little bit heavier than the standard one that you buy and it's also four foot long. So you've got four foot of throw versus about 18 inches of throw. For a tall guy, he's not gonna be able to pick it up high enough off the post to where when he comes back down, he's gonna miss the post and injure his hand. So it's a real safe unit to use, much more efficient than the smaller ones. If you'd like more information about my T-Post Pounder or the other items that we manufacture, log on to beamfencecompany.com. All right, tell me about that, that typical buck, that really wide, typical buck. He has no name. Uh, we, we're thinking about maybe just naming him Pedigree because he's Express on Shadow on Blue 37 and he's about as pretty as deer as I've ever seen in my life. You know, there, there's some folks that, that uh, don't like non-typicals and there's some po folks that don't like typicals, but I think everybody's got to like that deer. You know, he's well over 30 inside. Uh, I've always wanted to raise a deer that would rival Sundowner's beam length at 35 inches. Well. If he'll just keep growing for another three weeks, we may be there. There's a myth that if you bring northern genetics into the south, that you're not going to really be able to raise them good. Today it's going to be about 100 degrees in Ohio. And that's, that's our, hum, uh, our heat index has been over 100 every day for the last week and a half. And you see they're living here good, so does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> you know, as I go around your farm, I, I sit here and I'm a, I mean, folks, I'm a deer farmer, have been for quite some time and I'm in awe at what I see here. Uh, this farm is located about 40 minutes outside of Columbus, Ohio, and if you were to uh, call Billy or Mitzi, his wife, and uh, schedule a farm tour, you could come and you could look at these deer any time. I mean, the best time to come is this time of year, I mean, in the summer. Uh, they got fawns on the ground and all. I got this question for you. What advice would you give an existing deer farmer, somebody who's been in business three years, five or 10 years, uh, to help make him more profitable. So basically you see that big buck, mm -hmm. you go to that farmer, find out what his pedigree is, you go by his mother, his sister, or something to do with that. So quality, quality, quality. Every farm has got a special deer, and one that uh, he may not be the biggest or she may not be the best bred, but it's a special deer for some reason. And on this farm, his name is Monster. You come and see me, huh? How you doing? Well, good afternoon. All right, everybody, go online right now and tell us what this deer's score is going to be. Now, when he finishes out, because what's going to happen is whoever gets closest to the score, Billy Sage is going to send him the antlers. That's right, absolutely free. All you need to do is act right now. This deer's name is Monster. He's still got another three to four weeks of growing left on him. What, well, I smell different? Huh? I'm wearing the same clothes I had on earlier. I know, I just smell worse. So what do you think? If you're thinking 200 inches, he go way north of there, I promise you. Would, would. So this year we've got, you know, probably 180 fawns or so on the ground right now, expecting a few more, could get around 200 fawns. Uh, been a really good year. Got some incredible, incredible um, interns helping us this year.
These girls been here since May, hadn't missed a day, always smiling, up here at seven in the morning, uh, nine, 10, 11 at night, they go home. If you wanna be a farmer, that's the life of a farmer. If you're a deer enthusiast, I think you're gonna really enjoy the video we're about to show you. I want to preface it by saying that uh, it may be considered to be grotesque to some, but uh, it's reality. Occasionally things uh, on the farm don't go as expected, but that's the life of the farm. She's got a baby, it's breached, it's in trouble. Uh, head may be turned, uh, breached. Just put it in God's hand and get to work. Occasionally things uh, on the farm don't go as expected, but that's the life of a farm. She's got a baby, it's breached, it's in trouble. Uh, head may be turned, uh, breached, whatever. She's in trouble, the baby's in trouble. Uh, it's a tense moment, you know, you don't know how things are gonna work out. Uh, just put it in God's Got hand it. and Got get it. to work. You, know, you look at Billy and Mitzi, and I can't think of two other people that are in love with their animals any more uh, than they are. They absolutely love them. They do everything they can to keep them alive. And I've been out here and I have seen them take care of animals that any other deer farmer would say, throw in the towel, they're done. But not the folks here. I was on the edge of tears watching it. That's precious, ain't it? She is so incredible warm. I don't know that I've ever felt one like this. This is a girl. She's ready. She's ready for a bottle. She is ready. Isn't that fresh? That's a mirror. That's just so awesome. Here you go, baby. You got it. Okay. Let's let her flip flop around a little bit and we'll try it again. Now she wants to get up and go. That cool, Billy. In my mind, there's no better time to get into the deer industry. It is so cool right now. Uh, the education, the things that you can learn, CWD live testing, saving lives. Uh, it's just amazing, the technology. If you've ever thought about getting involved in deer farming, what I would encourage you to do is go online to DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. You can watch every one of our TV shows right there 24-7. Watch them, study them, learn about deer farming, learn about animals, learn about the responsibility that it takes to be able to raise good, healthy, valuable deer. I get some people ask me, what are you for? Are you for high fencing? Are you for low fencing? Are you for deer farming? Are you for, it doesn't matter. They always want to know what side I'm on. I'm going to tell you what side Keith Warren's on. I'm on the deer side, because when you're on the deer side, you're always on the right side, right? All right, this is from Wayne. He says he lives in Ohio. He says, you always talk about the importance of DNA and deer and how the better the pedigree is, the more valuable the deer is. My question is, what kind of sample do you have to get from deer for DNA? Blood, hair, bones? Uh, the answer to that, Wayne, is all the above, blood, hair, and bones, but the most common thing that we use to get DNA off a deer is hair. What we'll wind up doing underneath the tail, on the bottom of every deer's tail, we pull about 50 hair follicles to make sure you get the roots on them too. They come out rather easily. Take them, put them in a little small envelope, and send them into the North American Deer Registry. They'll wind up taking it and analyzing that, get the DNA off of it. And actually, the, the North American Deer Registry has an online service where you get on 
and not only see where your deer pedigree is, but also see who he's related to. So it's a real cool way to do it. But the answer is you can get DNA from blood, hair, or bones, but the primary way we do it here is with hair. On today's show, you got to see some real magic happen on the program. And white-tailed deer are magical, and magic happens all the time on a deer farm. If you'd like more information about the Bone Factory, you can contact Billy Sage. He'd love to show you his place. He's got a lot to show. I'm Keith Warren. I'd like to thank you for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. Hey, you little piece of miracle. I get people ask me all the time, do you ever get tired of this? Do you ever get tired of doing your job deer farming, visiting deer farms? What do you think? Put it right on your head. I will. God, I love deer. I wish people were as cool as deer. You got an itch? Let me itch it for you. Let me itch it for you. Huh? What? The answer is no. I don't get tired of this. If you have any questions or comments about today's show, make sure and send me an email and I'll get right back to you.